looking like it's gonna be tough. <laughs> 98! 99! 4,000! Woo! That's what's coming up next. We are Nick and Mathilde. And in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia and Africa. We want to see it all. This is day 420 and we're in Colombia. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. We have left the desert and now we're going straight to the mountains. All around us it is extremely beautiful. It's super green and we can see the first range of the mountains just on the horizon. We just look at it non-stop and it's beautiful. That is just us, thrilled to be on the road to one of the most iconic mountain range in the world, the Andes. But our joy was short-lived. We were going full speed toward the mountains. Super nice road, really ready when we cannot unlock our fuel tank. The key enters but doesn't turn, so now we're waiting for someone to help us. I just kept turning, turning, turning for like a whole five minutes slowly without putting any pressure. No, no, sudden it just was Wow. Ah. El. El. This new week in Colombia, we finally leave the coast and hit behind us. Our objective is to reach the doors of the Andes in Colombia at 4,000 meters elevation, where a new type of climate and landscapes awaits us. In every valley, up every pass, this week we go all the way up. Make it to our first valley niched in the region of North Santander. There, the city of Playa de Belém is home to a curious natural formation locals called Los Estoraques. Wow! Woo! Woo! These geoformations are super nice. They've uh, been all carved by wind and water over time and uh, it's all these little single foot tracks going all around the geoformations. There's more up there, more over there. Mm -hmm. Wow, this looks adventurous. Look at this tree. Wow. <gasps> Feels like, you remember when we were in... Uh, Utah. In Utah, walking through the canyons? Yeah. And I think we found a legit camp spot, really nice. So we have the view on the park we were exploring earlier, but it's not too warm, it's not humid, there's a bit of a soft breeze. I love it, I love it. We're going to install everything and then cook. It doesn't show on videos, but all of Central America, we couldn't really stay outside very late because one, it was super warm and humid and two, there was a lot of mosquitoes. Here at 1,500, no mosquitoes. We still have the sun. So we decided to do a little drink. Not quite the Andes we were dreaming of yet, but not too bad either for first day traveling to the mountains. 
The most fascinating is that back home, already at those elevations, we reach areas without trees and sometimes snow. Here, at Los Estoraques, we are in t-shirts cheering at sunset. Sin tus caderas, no puedo cantar. Sin tus caderas, no puedo gozar. The next day, we continue southeast in our quest to the high Andes. But this time, we are out of normal roads. Our objective is to reach iconic white villages of Santander. But we are slow, very, very, very slow. That is a long day on super small roads, mountain roads. We plan to do 140 kilometers and I think it's going to take us about 8 hours total. Our average speed is 20 kilometers per hour. We're really slow. But it's beautiful, we're crossing coffee and cacao plantations, tons of small villages, they're all like put on the edge of the cliff, it feels really remote, like anyone who needs to go anywhere from here, it's several hours by a motorcycle, and yeah, I can't imagine what it is to, to live here. <laughs> Look at that canyon, it looks like there's a rain in between one of them. Wow, very cool. This off road is really sweet. We have to keep going though. This is where we are parked tonight, in the center of a little tiny little village actually. There's a church over there. There is a tiny little restaurant here and then a few houses all around. And we're parked right here. Now, why are we parked here? Because it got really dark quickly, like it started getting dark quickly. I think in 30 minutes it's dark. And so we decided to just ask a village if we could sleep here. And so we were allowed and they seemed really nice like they usually are. We've always had nice encounters. And tomorrow they're celebrating the father Juan Jose um, as he died a year ago and they're all working hard, preparing, making it all clean, all ready for tomorrow. For now we're gonna set up camp, have dinner and then relax. Out of nowhere. They said, okay, come on, take a shower. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't be shy, no problem. And if you guys need anything, you just let us know and tomorrow morning we can make your breakfast. And we're like, this is crazy. So now, shower time. Bye-bye. He even made us a little soup. And so we're going to have soup. I'm not really sure what there is in here, but it looks like carrots, potatoes, plantain probably, a bit of chicken maybe. But uh, such a sweet thing to do. It's really nice to arrive in this place and meet those amazing people because today was a bit of a special day for us. This morning we woke up and we got a message from travelers in front of us who got attacked during the night on their wild camp spot. It shook us a bit because, you know, we travel exactly like them and it got us thinking of how we should prepare. So then we were kind of looking at people along the street with a different angle than usual. And so arriving here and meeting those great people, we're going back into our usual mood of like, we should trust people. Some bad things happen and we have a few like solutions in place to mitigate that. But generally we just meet amazing people and people in this village are great. What a beautiful breakfast. What do you have? Eggs, 
Looks like a pancake, cheese, crackers, and a soup, which I'm not sure is an egg. Yeah, it's an egg. Okay. And this is arepas. It's the typical pancake from here. Okay. Buen provecho. We leave our friends and complete the few kilometers separating us from the village of Barichara always on our small trail. We realize arriving there in this touristy city that all of the small villages we crossed on the way had nothing to envy in charm or beauty. The only difference that there were no decent roads connecting them. Anyways, Barichara is a beauty. We reached another milestone in our journey, but our real goal lies behind the next mountain range. So we embark toward the last obstacle on our route. That's what's coming up next. We are heading more east in the mountain range now. We know there is a way to cross the mountains. We've heard some people did it, but we're not quite sure on how is the road and if it's possible to cross all the way. So Nick is now trying to map a route and then we'll probably need to confirm with people from the village down there. Looking like it's gonna be tough. <laughs> <laughs> down there is uh, La Sepita and then to take the off-road until the other side of the valley is actually 40 kilometers or 35 kilometers but it could easily take between like uh, three hours, four hours, five hours, I have no idea. Let's look at that. That's where we're going. And then we see this uh, blue parrot, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's just here, it's just chilling in front of a house. While I was taking pictures, all of a sudden this lady came out of her building and said, Hey, won't you guys come in for, for a juice or something? And we were like, oh, okay, sure. She seemed really nice. And uh, so we went in and we spent about 15 minutes talking while drinking the, the, the juice. And uh, one thing that's funny is that we had read that here in Sepita, a village with the nicest people of Colombia, and literally, I think it is because two minutes into getting into the town, taking pictures of this bird, the stater says, hey, come over and have a, ju have a juice, and incredible. <laughs> We actually asked uh, Maria Luisa also to confirm our itinerary to the next village on the other side of the mountains. So she told us one of the routes we were thinking about is not possible to cross. But the one that Nick had mapped is possible. She said it's still a long way, but you can do it. So let's go.
not been to. This is one facing a truck in the middle of a mountain road. I don't know if it shows on videos the steepness of the fields where people planted. It's it's like almost vertical. This is incredible. Never would have thought that we would get ourselves in these types of situations. Now it's the second mountain we're crossing in a row and they're both completely different and both as incredible. South America looks promising. Our next challenge is to find a place to sleep because there's nothing more rare than flat land in the mountain range like this. We even see like the little houses, they're taking the few spaces that can be flattened. So now let's try to find a spot for the big albatross. We found a place to camp. Uh, next to the road but there's not much traffic passing by and mainly we have a beautiful view uh, it was not easy to find a place to park because there's not much uh, flat ground but this one is perfect and we asked the authorization to the people who live just under here and they said we can stay we are at 2100 meters altitude and uh crazy view sunset is about to go and tonight burgers, burgers. Oh. Night, burger night oh my god burgers burger whoa with a view <laughs> we are not far we can feel it the mountains are already much higher but it's not because you're getting high that you're getting there before reaching our objective we still need to go down a last valley for climbing all the way up to the Andes. Last night we slept at 2200 meters of elevation and then today on the road we went all the way down to like a thousand, a bit less. And now we're going all the way back up and we're probably going to sleep around 4000 meters. So it's going to be cold, um, but we're really looking forward to seeing how it looks up there. 40 degrees and warm sun down in the valleys, up to cold nights up in the mountain. Just a natural roller coaster of a trip. left and now we're on road it says and we're at 2400 meters altitude and we're supposed to reach 4000 so I'm guessing since it's only 22 kilometers and 1600 meters go up it's going to be straight like this the whole way as we arrived at the city of El Cocuy we knew we had almost reached our destination the national park of El Cocuy is land to the Uwa people Immediately, we can feel an Andes vibe was so much stronger, especially how people dressed wearing poncho of wool and hats. 3,000 meters of elevation at the city, the road keeps climbing. At those heights where we're from, it's only rocks and snow. Here, pastures of green grass all around. But far away in the horizon, we can distinguish the gorgeous mountains of the Cordillera. Ninety-seven! Ninety-eight! Ninety-nine! 
4,000! Woo! High five! Nice! After a full day of driving, we made it at 4,000 meter elevation. Woo! Nice job! And good job to Albo. It's the first time with us anyways that he's uh, going so high, which is awesome. It's working perfectly well. And the view here is amazing. Yeah, and it's the first time we actually really feel in the Andes, like the vegetation is completely different. We're going to see it a bit more tomorrow in the hike we're doing. And from our camp spot, not only we have a beautiful landscape, but we also see the snow up the mountains of El Cucuy National Park. And this snow has a specific meaning too. And we also talk about it tomorrow. This place is truly incredible. Yeah, look at this sunset over there. It's beautiful. <sighs> oh man. Woo! So we just checked, now it's 9 Celsius. Tonight it's gonna be between 5 and 3. Yes, it's the first time we take the big jacket out in a while. And but it actually feels quite nice to be able to like layer up after all those months wearing only shorts and t-shirts. We woke up at 4,000 meters and I have to say, I feel a little bit, like a bit of a headache, but the sun is amazing. How did you sleep? Slept really well. I was even a little bit too warm at times. No headache. Uh, slept pretty nice. The first thing is, will Albo turn on? in this cold weather. Now it's about 10 Celsius. Overnight it was between three and four. Let's see. Oh! Woo! The snow we can see up in the mountains and the glacier all over there. Like a very special signification here in Kokui National Park. The park belongs to the Uwa people and they considered the snow sacred. The snow and the glaciers have been melting at an unprecedented rate, so they really saw like what they considered as a sacred piece of their land to be disappearing. They assimilated the change of their environment with the tourism that was being developed. And so the park has actually been closed for an entire, I don't think three years, blocked the entire access and told the government if we reopen it's going to be at our condition. And nowadays the whole eastern part of the park is entirely closed uh, except to the indigenous people. And in this part of the park there's about three trails that are open and you need to have a guide to go there. beautiful out here. It's really a change from the coconut tree and beach vibe and it makes us so happy. It's a very unique ecosystem. They call Paramo here and there's only five countries in the world that have that kind of ecosystem. In Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Venezuela and Kenya and right here we're at 4,000 meters altitude. Made it to the first lagoon. Took us uh, just about an hour. Whoa. Here it is. That water looks very cold, but also very fresh. And there's a second lagoon, which is just up there. So we definitely do feel, you know, that we're out of air, but it's okay. This is just the beginning of all the Andes. Whew, at 4,000 meters, those guys have a better cardio than I have. <sighs>
We're extremely happy to finally be up here in the Andes because it just feels like a different culture, a different scene. I mean, it's very green, also very cold. We had to put on the diesel heater. We pulled out one of the sleeping bags. Uh, it just feels much more cozy, but at the same time, the sceneries are splendid and we can't wait to continue the journey all the way until Ushuaia with mostly mountainous roads like that. And we're also quite excited because coming up next week is meeting with uh, some people from the Overland community in Colombia. We've been in contact with them for a long time virtually. So we're really looking forward to meeting them in person. This week, we truly felt we made it to South America. The Andes being the spinal cord of the continent, we plan to follow all the way down to the southernmost point possible. Next week, we continue exploring Colombia and meet new and old friends alongside the road. To be sure you do not miss what comes next, subscribe to the channel. Until next week, take care! So now we wrap up everything and we go check out our first Andean? 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 Our first hike in the Andes. Thank you.